Welcome back to more Reddit stories. I'm Shane, and today I am joined by Chance and Arasha. Welcome. And guys, before we get into this, I need to let you know, this Friday is our big live show, The Funeral of Anthony Padilla, also known as The Roast of Anthony Padilla. It's going to be brutal. Get your tickets at the link below. Uh, now let's get into these Reddit stories. The theme today is not getting married today. Uh, which is a Sondheim reference, I've been told. Ally. Yeah, you, you didn't know, you did not know that. I don't know musicals. What we're gonna be dealing with today is, is relationship drama. It's time to handle it before you take that next step, but it's at those moments when you're about to take that next step that often things go wrong. Yeah. You're simmering. Yeah, mm. yeah, you can't ignore it any longer. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see how this goes. First one comes from Am I the Asshole? It also got posted on to Am I the X? So Am I the X? You know, this is, Am I the X is a subreddit for people who do not realize they've probably been broken up with already. Oh no. Like they're writing the story like, oh, my girlfriend's so mad at me and she she packed all her stuff and she said she's moving out of state and I haven't seen her in a week, but I hope things work oh, out. It's like, no. no, you guys are broken up. Oh, um, no. Am I the Asshole for asking my girlfriend's father his blessing to propose? Doesn't seem so bad. No. Uh, so it's a 26 year old man. His girlfriend is 22. Okay, first of all, sorry for any mistakes. English is a second language and I'm still processing what just happened. So I've been dating my girlfriend for a bit more than a year. She's the perfect girl for me. She's hot, caring, and smart. And we both love each other very much. I've been thinking about proposing for a while. My girlfriend is almost done with school and I have a good job with a lot of savings. Since we're visiting her hometown for the week, I thought this week would be a good moment to ask her father for his blessing. I've only met with her family a couple of times since they live in another city, but they never seem to have a problem with me. Her father is pretty easygoing. So while we don't have much in common, I wasn't really scared of his reaction, only a bit nervous. This afternoon, while my girlfriend was out with old friends, I sat down with him and asked him if I'd have his blessing to marry his daughter. He looked really awkward and confused and asked me a couple of times if I was being serious. I explained that I was, that I loved his daughter very much and would make sure she never needs anything. He said something along the lines of, whoa, I, I don't know what to say. I was not expecting that. We were silent for a bit and he left the room. I was disappointed to say the least, but still had hopes to convince him. My girlfriend came back soon after and received a phone call from her mother who told her I asked my girlfriend's dad for his blessing. My girlfriend was really angry at me for asking her dad instead of her and that doing so is sexist, which is stupid because the point was to ask her dad to propose not to marry her by force. Saying she was absolutely not ready for marriage wasn't even considering it because she thought it was way too early in our relationship after more than a year. She said she felt humiliated in front of her parents and now she left to sleep at her home at her mother's tonight, leaving me alone with her father who's been avoiding me since our conversation. I don't understand what happened. I'm really hurt by her reaction and the way she viewed the possibility of marrying me as completely absurd. I'm really angry and confused at her parents for telling her about my plans instead of letting me propose how I intended. Yeah. I uh... Uh... Okay, I think I have a lot of thoughts. Okay. It should have been a conversation before. Like, it feels like it came out of nowhere, no? I'm of the belief, and from what I've known and, and just everything of, a proposal is never really a surprise. No. It should, I don't think it should be a surprise. So if she, you should agree you're getting married. I think so. And then it's like, cool. Yeah. All right. And then, and the then, surprise. And then it's yeah. like, like well, a controlled it, surprise. Uh, the proposal should be a surprise in that you don't know when it's happening. Right. Yes. But not, so not that if. you know that it it's is happening. going yes. to happen. Yeah. Exactly. And I, it feels kind of circumnavigating when he's going to her dad before he's like, no, we need to have this conversation before you're talking to my parents. Right. No. I mean, a few things come up for me immediately. Like, obviously, it seems like this. This guy seems like he is, he has lots of different experiences, right? Like first, he's 26, so I think maybe whether it's like culturally, whether it is just what he knows or what he believes, maybe he is just in a different stage of his life and he is kind of like around this time is when you're supposed to get married. So there might be just a little lack of considering that she is like four years younger. Yeah, 100%. She is not even done with school yet. So yeah. I think for her and her parents, it kind of was like, 
marriage, like how about graduation? Yeah, you know, like 100%. kind of out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, but also, again, like it could be like he maybe wanted to make it like more romantic or, or tried to ask for permission from uh, her parents before going in for it. Like, I don't think I don't have too big of a problem with that. What I don't like is how he was like, I wish that I just got to do how I wanted it. I wish that I just got to. Oh, that makes him. That makes him an asshole. Yeah, yeah. like obviously there were other things and other people's feelings at play, and I think that is maybe where he misstepped. Well, right, because because so much of this, if they communicated and they were in right. line with, because a lot of people, a lot of, look, people get married at different ages. Some people want to get married young. Some yeah. people want to wait. Um, he clearly was not aware of what his girlfriend's plan was. No. He has not been asking her what she views her love life as being. And then she felt blindsided when the parents come at her with marriage. She's yeah. like, I never said that. Exactly. Who told exactly. you that? Yeah. yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with asking for a uh, parent's blessing if mm -mm. you and your partner are both like in line with wanting to do the traditional stuff and the traditional path yeah. of it all. Yeah. But um, she clearly... She's clearly a very different person than he thinks she is. I think so too. I think he is just kind of considering, again, himself in that he is like, I found this dream girl and we've been dating for a year and that is plenty of time and I gotta yeah. just go for it. She's and also I think 22, like she's gonna change four times over before. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the rush? What's the rush? I don't know. They've only been dating a year. Why not just enjoy not I, I being don't married know. for I a time? Mean, some people with with different with different backgrounds, they they believe like you should get married sooner. Like, yeah. yeah, he seems he strikes me as someone who's very traditional in a lot of ways. Totally, um, totally. And and you know there there's partners out there that he could meet that would fall in line with that and be like, yeah, I agree with with that, and I Absolutely. want that too. But he's clearly not asked his girlfriend anything no, about what she there's wants. Not been a that's, conversation. That's, that's what makes him an asshole. He's just navigating under his own standards and being like, well, I think I should get married right now. And I think I should get married to this girl because she's perfect for me. And it lines up with my life, but not hers at all. No. Exactly. He's thinking about himself. He's, it, yeah. It kind of feels like he's trying to take the father role. He's like, and now we're passing you on. Yeah. And now I'm in charge of you. Oh, Scary town. It is scary town. The verdict was asshole. Yeah. Uh, the comments, you're the asshole. All of this could have been avoided by having an adult conversation with your partner about future plans. Some people still like the whole asking dad for a blessing slash permission, permission things. I find it outdated and it seems so does your girlfriend. Something that would have come up if marriage was at all discussed in the year you've been together, along with a potential timeline of when it might be appropriate to propose. Yeah. I also think a very appropriate conversation nowadays in dating is, do you want to get married? Because I feel right. like true. so many people I know are like, don't no, need we're, not, to. we're not doing that. Yeah. yeah. And that's a that's a conversation you need to have. Um, or at least just gauge like general. Interest. Right. Sure. Have a conversation. Yeah, just, I'm amazed it never came up yeah. at yeah. all in all your conversations. Um, someone said, she's 22 and you've only been dating a little over a year. Of course, she's not ready for marriage. Right. No hate to those who marry young. You're the asshole. Yeah, he he has a very different view because he put in parentheses. He's like, we've been dating for over a year. Yeah, that's it. I'm like, forever. Oh, no, my guy. Um, someone said, you're the asshole. It is sexist. You asked her father for permission to marry her. It's a, it's a tradition rooted in sexism and is reminiscent of a time when women were property. You are not ready for marriage. She is very young. She is technically still in her adolescence. Ends at 24. A year isn't that long, especially when you are young. Three years is a more typical dating phase prior to a marriage proposal. You don't know her. You didn't know she would be upset by what you did. You didn't know that she wouldn't even consider marriage. You don't know her. You know what you want, but you don't know her. Mm. That's, I love yeah, that. That summed yeah. it up pretty well. That's well said. That's well yeah. said. And again, I think the focus here is just that he, and again, he said it at the beginning that he, that English is a second language. So he, I think, is operating under some beliefs, some traditions and rituals that maybe he grew up watching. And he was like, oh, like, you know, again, a very outdated tradition in lots of places, but a lot of places still believe that right out of college, a woman is supposed to get married. Right. So he might be thinking in a completely right. different way than all of us, like, oh, time is ticking. She's almost done with school. Like, I got to do this quick. Like, he might just be operating under that other yeah. timeline. 
But again, it's still not an excuse for being like, but this was my plan. Yeah. Like, right. it clearly wasn't a well thought out one. No, yeah, he doesn't, he, he, he clearly doesn't think that his girlfriend does or should have any plans herself. No. Right? His life. His yeah. agency. She needs to... yeah. Yeah. But I mean, hey, she's hot. But, but, she's, uh, hot she's hot. And, but she's perfect. hot. For me. She's great. But she's hot. <laughs> but she's hot. Wow. Uh, so yeah, he's probably already broken up with and does not realize it. <laughs> that seems pretty clear oh, to no, me. Oh no, yeah. Maybe, they, maybe they're in a world where they talked it out and she's like. And she said, see you in 10 years. She said, see you in 10 years. Ask daddy in 10. I feel like the talking that out would end up in a breakup anyways, so. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Our next story, apparently there is more communication, but something, something still is not happening here. Okay. So I don't know. Okay. Let's see. I, 28 year old woman, refused to sign my marriage license at my wedding to a 28 year old man. And now I think I should leave him. What? Interesting. So she refused to sign a marriage license at the wedding. Okay. Okay. It's been one month since my wedding with Fred, 28, and I am refusing to sign our marriage license. And now I am honestly considering leaving him. For six years, I believed Fred and I were on the same page about what we wanted from one another and our future. We agreed, as in he's made this point as well, we didn't want children, ever. And I made it clear before and during wedding planning that I wasn't changing my last name, ever. He agreed to this. I am an only child, while Fred has three brothers. My last name dies with me, while his, father's, while his family's last name will continue on with his three brothers, who are all married with children. And with this all considered and points made on these facts, I believe there wasn't an issue because Fred agreed to it. I personally hate the tradition of taking on the husband's last name. In my personal, every right to have opinion, for all you ready to jump in me, jump on me in the comments, it is an archaic tradition that feels more like the transfer of property to a man than a union. And even though I'm never having children, even the thought of someone else's last name being attached to my hypothetical child's, if I do all nine months of creating it and wrecking my body just doesn't sit right with me. On top of that, why should I have to change all my registered IDs and documentation just because I'm a woman? It's not fair. So it's our wedding day and Fred really pushed to have a ceremony in front of everyone where we'd sign our marriage license together. He was first to go, and when it was my turn, he had his hand placed really weirdly on the document. I told him to move his hand. We had an awkward, quiet battle about it, and when he finally did, I saw what he was hiding. It was his job to fill out all the forms for the license since he offered to do that for me, so I had one less thing to worry about, and he went behind my back and purposefully filled it out so I would be taking his last name. Turns out in Florida, you can put your maiden name and the name you are changing it to on the form, and that's what I saw on the license, both names. We were at the clerk together with all of our needed IDs and documentations, and I was so stressed and exhausted, I wasn't paying attention, and I trusted him, so I never thought once that in any world I would need to review what he filled out or even review the license when we had it in hand. So fair. I I refused to make a scene in front of all of our friends and family or fall into the pressure I was under, so I pretended to sign it and the rest of the night was ruined for me. Everything I thought we agreed to and all my preferences he knew about and thought he respected were f***ing destroyed. It was like my world was ending in that and what should have been the best day of my life. Fred is now a completely different person. He's all about tradition now and how it's his right to have a wife with his last name. How it's embarrassing that his brother's wives didn't make an, this an issue for them and how all his friends will give him shit if I don't change it. He keeps saying that it's not that big of a deal and I'm ruining our future. On top of that, he keeps bringing up the child argument saying, we can't both have different last names and they should take mine. We said we didn't want kids. I know it's technically the certificate that changes your last name, but to know this is what he's wanted all along and that he was willing to try and pull one over on me is disgusting. I feel manipulated and heartbroken, and now he's put all the pressure on me to make a decision because time is running out on filing for our marriage certification, and he isn't changing his mind. I feel like I've wasted our guests' time, our and our family's money for the wedding, and now our future together because I let him fool me for six years and I never saw this happening to me. I feel like I've wasted my life and I'm backed into a corner with someone I don't even recognize anymore. Leave him, girly. That's tough. Leave him, girly. I, I do. My initial take on, on that is absolutely leave. That is f***ing crazy. That is, I, yeah. I feel like that one isn't as nuanced at all. Like I really, the only like empathy that I think I'm feeling towards him is that it feels like it was just something that he was like, just 
deeply shoving into himself and just being like, I just need to hold on to it. Like, I, I just I just need to, to to marry this person and it's going to be okay. And, and hopefully her mind will change or like hopefully something will happen when it was just like, no. Mm -hmm. Like a clear statement of like, that's not happening. This is how our marriage is going. And then it's not even that he like changed his mind no. and was like, oh, by the way, like actually I, I do want kids. And now he just tried to sneak it in there. That's so annoying. That's that's so annoying because it's so different than a conversational ask. This is my yeah. want. This is important to me. Can we at least talk about it a little right. bit? Right, because it's so then fair to, to change your once mind. Once again, if the you're circumnavigating. Like, Wait. Why yeah. are we taking all the way around? Just go to the, talk direct to me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but because he thought, he wanted to trick her into being with him. He yeah. was like, okay, I, he wanted, he's like, I, I want this person but I also want this person to have kids with me. Yeah. So how do I make that happen even yeah. if they don't want it? It's yeah. so messed up. Yeah. And because whole, yeah, like... there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with wanting kids or not wanting no. kids. But if you're in a relationship with someone and you disagree on that, you both need to be like, hey, maybe, maybe we have to go our separate ways. And she yeah. keeps saying we have, we've had these conversations, and I've told him. She this put it in is all caps. It, She's right like, there. we agree this is how on how I this. feel. Yeah. yeah. For me, and it sounds like he was just putting shit under the rug. It's just haunting to me for like, to think about that moment too for her when she like saw that. And then like the whole like, that she pretended to sign it. Like she is probably just horrified <laughs> over how that felt on her wedding yeah. day. Well, it's such a betrayal. You're uh, someone you trust and then it's like, oh, and their whole relationship, they were just trying to trick her. And in front of everybody too at their wedding, heartbreaking. And, and also heartbreaking that she clearly isn't able to walk away just yet. Uh, not everyone signs their certificate there at the wedding, at yeah. the, the ceremony. No. But it feels like maybe he wanted that to give power trick. To it. Yeah, it, it's he's a super manipulator. Yeah, is what I don't it like it one as. bit. Like, no, I mean one he lied. Thing, there's one thing about being like I do believe in traditions or I do like this ritual, but to just lie about it to manipulate your partner yeah. to try to like make mm -hmm. them enter into a marriage on false clauses. I don't like it at you all. You never can trust. Why I think she has no choice but to leave him is she's never going to trust him ever again. No, oh, no. How could you? Oh, yeah. And yeah. it's just, it's done. I, to me, we talked about this on the cheating episode of Reddit Stories. But to me, cheating, the bad part of it is the lying. Yes. And to me, a relationship lying is the most surefire way of killing it. 100%. Because yeah. without trust, there's no communication. Without communication, there's no relationship. Totally. And so like, I don't know what this guy was thinking. You make a mistake. And the lying and the omittance of the truth. Yeah, yeah. People yeah. try, I'm, don't lie, but you you didn't tell me the that, truth, bitch. That's exactly yeah. it. You can make a mistake, like we all like slip up, but the first moment that you have, the first chance that you have to admit it, you should. And right. if you don't, that trust is just continuing to, um, to become a bigger gap for you and that person. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, and, and now suddenly out of nowhere, he's absolutely certain about how I feel. It's not even a matter of like, oh, I, I didn't know. And now I changed my mind. It's like, no, he was always certain. Bye. That guy is a nightmare. Bye. Yeah. Bye. Um, some comments here. Verdict. Sure. I don't know. I don't, it's clear. Sure. Um, I kind of want to hear him get dragged. This is relationship advice. So it's, there's, it's not an am I the asshole situation, but it's clear who's the asshole. Yeah. Okay. Some comments. Even aside from all the relationship stuff, this guy tried to trick you into signing a document that you were very clear you didn't agree to. Right. Uh, uh, it sounds like he's showing his true colors. I'm so proud of you for standing up for your principles and not going along with his shitty misogynistic plan. OP said, but how do you, but how do you move on from this? What do I tell my family, his family, all my friends who spent so much money mm. to come to my wedding and be in it? I have never felt so much pressure and stress and f***ing sadness ever. Wasting all of this just because I don't want to change my last name is just becoming more and more ludicrous to me, but I can't bring myself to abandon my That's wants for his. That's so true. I also had that thought, like, yeah. at the, like she's setting these own, like, it's important to her and she's built that up in her head, but now it's like, oh, f***. Like, maybe I would have had some lee room, leeway room on this if we would have talked about it before. Totally. So it sucks, I, you, she sounds like she knows that it's not as important. Like she's saying it's important. Sure, she but is. she has no choice. No, it's now? not about It's not no. about the name change now. Absolutely it's, it's not. It's just. Yeah, they yeah. didn't even give it a chance. And to, like, it sounds it like out. in the way that she's writing that she would have open, been open to conversations totally. about it. Totally. No, I, I mean, my if I, if I was talking to her and she was saying this, I'm like, yeah, things are gonna suck. Yeah. Things are gonna suck, but you, you have no choice. You have no oh, choice. Yeah. No choice. Things are gonna suck. Yeah. Tell your truth. Be honest. Yeah. And if your family is not on your side, f them. Like, 
but everyone's gonna agree. Someone said, honestly, I am not sure why either of you got married. You both sound like you have radically different values. If you leave him, it doesn't sound like either of you are losing strictly based on this thread. OP responded, I thought we had the same values and came to an agreement and then he suddenly just switches on me. Yeah. He said he didn't think I, I actually was serious and that I would just change my mind eventually. There you go. Holy crap. He was just pretending That's to rough. be somebody else and he was like, it'll be fine, it's gonna be fine. And then when the wedding day came and she still hadn't changed her mind, he was like, well, well good I'll thing just, I have this fake document go. that good she's thing not gonna know and I'm gonna cover it up with my hand. Commit a fucking crime. Uh, <laughs> To respond to your other comment, OP, this is exactly what you tell people when they ask what happened. You thought the two of you had the same values and came to an agreement, but suddenly he changed his mind. Instead of addressing it, he chose to lie and attempt to manipulate you to get his way. And that was at the very inception of your marriage, beyond disgraceful. Uh, lastly, someone commented, a uh, we got a big conversation here. Okay. And this is how abusive marriages start, not openly and violently, but with small incremental changes to who you thought you were with. Slowly, the real him comes out into the open once you find yourself with every reducing options. Uh, please do not let the sunk cost fallacy entrap you even further in this, because sticking with it will have you le leading a life that you do not want. Yeah. But by then, it will be Huge. too late and even harder to leave. This is, after all, how many abusive marriages start off. OP responded, I know. I just don't know how someone can keep face for six years without cracking and right. how I didn't pick up on it. <sighs> he always seems so sincere, but looking back on it now, I'm wondering if when I said, I'm not changing my last name, his agreement was the same as appeasing a child. Like, uh-huh, of course you can. After reading a lot of what y'all have to say, I'm just starting to get f***ing furious. I feel like he's fizzled me down to an idea, not a person. I'm angry he thought I'm stupid enough to fall for this shit that he tried using public humiliation to coerce me and weak enough to let him steamroll me. I'm not a stupid person. I like to think I've got a good head on my shoulders, so I'm angry I even let this happen. And I know everyone is saying, leave, this is abusive. And I don't disagree, but I cannot explain to any of you the f***ing weight I have on my shoulders. Uh -huh. I know I shouldn't care what anyone else thinks and should put myself first, but this is the most weighted decision I've ever had to make and it's f***ing hard. It's really, really hard i know all of this and i still can't see the light at the end of the tunnel that is so it's sad. it's very sad but it's it's like you don't get married because of the the because oh i don't want to upset my family yeah. like that's but, i mean yeah. i think i think also though you know like uh, right we read that and we're like get out right it's easy like, for leave. us but yeah like again we also have to remember that she has inside of those six years so many good memories with this man. And yeah. she's like, maybe that wasn't him. And maybe that's mm -hmm. really him. And maybe he's going through something. Like leaving somebody is way harder, even if it's, it's like true. something drastic like this or cheating, like it's so easy to just forgive and be like, it's gonna be okay. Like, I just believe in this person. It's such a band-aid that you can slap on. So hard. Um, I, I understand that it's it's truly a nightmare situation for her. I would feel the exact same way, but, it, and I think she, she knows, she knows what she has to do. I hope she does the right thing because yes, it's about to be really shitty. It's about to be super awkward and unfortunate, but that's not her fault. If she does get married, it's so much worse. She's now marrying yeah. someone that yeah. she, she already has hate for. Yeah. And yeah. Like who, he doesn't respect her. Yeah. She should prank Bad. him back. She yeah. should change all of his names to her name. There you go. Uh, uh, the sunk cost fallacy is a great one to bring up here because they've been dating for six years, so most all of her 20s. And even according to biological clock, especially nowadays, that's so, she's not in a bad, no, she's 28. It's not, not at all. Fine. Not yeah, even close. you're not, you're not, um, uh, but she, yeah, she seems to know who she is and what she wants out yes. of life. Yeah. And she knows this isn't it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm glad you said that it was from relationship advice too. And I was like, I hope nobody's calling her the asshole. Yeah, no, <laughs> he's a nightmare. Yeah. That's a bad guy. Definitely, yeah, bad men. This episode is brought to you by Mint Mobile. Give yourself the gift of insane savings this holiday season. Because with Mint Mobile right now, when you buy any three month plan, you'll get another three months for free. That's six months for the price of three. An incredible deal from a, a service that already provides incredible deals with as low as $15 a month for their services. Uh, and that's unlimited talk, text, data, everything. Uh, in fact, 
we use Mint Mobile for our social phone here at Smosh. So anything you see us posting online, it's powered by Mint Mobile. So thanks to them for all that they do. And it's so cheap. And the great thing is you can order it and activate it straight from home. They'll deliver it right to your door. And it's so simple. It's a pretty sweet deal. And as I said, right now, get any three-month plan and you'll get another three months for free. So check it out at mintmobile.com slash pitreddit. That's mintmobile.com slash pitreddit. Cut your wireless bill down to $15 a month by visiting mintmobile.com slash pitreddit. Back to the show. Am I the asshole if I call off my engagement because of a comment my fiance made about my late wife? For some background info, I, 43-year-old man, have two children with my late wife, Kayla, Sam, who's 21, and Liz, who's 16, all fake names. Kayla passed away when our kids were 15 and 10. I won't give specifics about how she passed, but she was struck by a drunk driver when she was on her way home from work. Whoa. She really was the love of my life, and to say that her passing hit our family hard would be an understatement. I promised myself that if I got back into the dating game, I wouldn't date anyone for at least a couple of years for the sake of my kids. Three years after my wife's passing, I met my now fiance. We'll call her Amanda. Things went slow and I didn't introduce her to my kids until we had been dating for about a year at that point. Now we've been together for three years and are engaged. Amanda and my kids have always had a good relationship. Neither of my kids are super close to her, but they have always been friendly and welcoming to her. And Amanda has never overstepped any boundaries my kids have, like trying to replace their mother. At the beginning of Amanda and I's relationship, she was a bit insecure of the fact that I was a widower. During the first few months of us dating, she would constantly ask things like, if Kayla had never passed, would I still be with her right now? I always kept my answers brief and told her that I didn't like thinking about the what ifs and that she was the one I was dating now and that that was what mattered. Yeah. Eventually, she stopped making these comments and I stopped worrying about it. Now to the issue. My parents were hosting a family dinner to celebrate my fiance and I's engagement. It was my mom and dad, my late wife's sister and her husband, Sam and Liz, and me and Amanda. Dinner was going well. We were all making small talk with each other and talked about wedding plans. About halfway into dinner, my mom made a comment about how she was so happy I was able to find the spark I had with Kayla in someone else. I don't think anybody really paid much attention to the comment, but then Amanda laughed and said, I'm happy she died. Otherwise, I would have never gotten him to myself. No, okay, okay, okay. The tone of the dinner immediately shifted and everyone got extremely tense, especially my kids. Amanda noticed the shift and started awkwardly laughing like she was trying to play her comment off as a joke. I was honestly just frozen as that was the first time she had made a comment like that. My kids looked disgusted and Liz got up and walked out to the car. Sam waited a bit longer like he wanted to wanted me to say something, but I was still in shock about what Amanda had said. To make a long story short, the dinner was kind of ruined, so I said my goodbyes to everyone, grabbed my fiance, and we all drove home. Ah! My yeah. daughter hasn't spoken to me or Amanda since, and it's been three days. I got tired of it and pulled my son aside to ask him what I should do. Oh. He said I he said something along the lines of I'm a grown man and don't care who another grown man marries, but I don't want a woman who speaks like that about our mother around my sister. Sam's comment stuck with me and now I'm considering calling off the engagement entirely. She's never made comments like this before, but I'm worried if I let it slide this one time, it will become more frequent and will it will affect my daughter. I need some advice from outside perspectives and just want to do right by my kids. Would I be the asshole if I called off the engagement because of the comment she made? <sighs> Um, Early. I also, I also think it's just really inappropriate. The if she hadn't passed, would you still be with her right now? Is a weird. I uh, see my Gemini ass, nosy ass self. I want to know, not for a bad reason. I just want to know to like know. I guess there's a better way to phrase it. Like, there definitely. is a better do you guys, way. You guys, yeah. Do you think you guys would have gone your whole? It's, life? it's like an insecurity thing, you know. No, it's like, not. Well, like it's a curiosity I, thing. Well, sometimes. It's different. Sometimes I think, I think her, it can be insecure. Uh, but with her, do we think it's a curiosity thing? With I, her, it doesn't feel. It doesn't feel like an insecurity thing. It feels like the way he spun it in this, and it feels like a bad time joke. 
a real issue is that we don't get to hear how she said yeah. it. Totally. Totally. And yes, they're but and it just also the like reaction if the reaction from they're everyone not in is a that, place, yeah. But and and like she's trying to play it off as as a joke. I think you need to as as someone who says jokes, yeah, you need to immediately be like, that was the worst thing I could have ever said. I'm yes, so you need sorry. to immediately yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm talking about, when I'm talking about total mass, I'm talking about the questions, the like, would you still be yes, with her? Yes, yes. I still read, I, I don't know. It, I mean, I again, I, I didn't have too big of a problem with that because I, yeah. I understand that like, yeah, you might just be like, yeah, sure. It might You might be wondering or you might just be like, like, I don't know, getting a little like meta and being like, what would my life look like if things were different? And yeah. sometimes that involves being like, what if, what if? Even if it does upset some people, but right, she moved on and she wasn't asking those anymore. Right. I think saying that joke, like, yeah, she probably had like a dumb, like just moment where she wasn't thinking and she was just like, oh, this is a joke. However, it's just like, even if you are unconsciously doing that, like yeah. the kids are there. Yeah. I just cannot defend even for a second, like just, it's it's just about being a little bit more thoughtful and being more considerate with your words and to just slip up like that, I don't think should go without some consequences. An, an important point to make is that he mentions it's been three days and he does not include any information about her being like, I want to apologize. Right. Or, I, or, mm. or any sort of like taking that back. Totally. Which is really bad. Yeah, I mean, look. It was he like, needed to address it. He did, even though it's awkward. Yeah. He needs to do something like either defuse the situation or go have a conversation with her because everyone in the room obviously felt away and it felt yeah, like, the like onus very was. obviously felt away. And if she's not aware of how bad that yes. was, it's a do you then, actually feel that? Because you just made a really weird joke. Yeah, it's like holy crap. Yeah. Um, and if people are getting up she, and leaving, like, right? Yeah. If she's not spending like those three days like groveling. Like she needs to be working on getting better with the kids. Like, I think it goes back to what we were just talking about with trust. Like that trust is just completely broken now with her because yeah. how can he trust it, that he's not, that she's not gonna just say something so evil like that? It's, it's, you know, I think we get caught up sometimes on like, well, does she deserve for them to break up, whatever. I'm like, it's not a matter of deserved or anything of, is this fixable? Like that is damage it evil? that was- Is it evil? Is it evil? She's saying, I'm happy that she's dead because I am where I am now. Because I wouldn't have gotten him to myself. Uh, I mm. would have never gotten him to myself. You know? It's brutal. Like, I, I understand, I, I, I could maybe understand her Everything saying like Everything needed to happen the way it happened to be where I am now is a nice sentiment to say. But 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 literally saying, I'm happy she died, yeah. like those words together the should not have come The syntax is not doing mouth. it for her. It's I think not there's, good. there was another Reddit story that we read where a guy married a, a widower and she had a couple kids and like, and that was the one where he was going um, and he would like talk to the, uh, he would go to the, the grave of, of the, the former dad and like talk to him and kind of like, Tell him about the kid's life, and so it was very sweet because you could tell he had respect for, for the his partner's, uh, you know, um, passed away husband. And I think that's the thing is that I just don't know if she respects. Feels coveted. It doesn't that. feel like that at all. It doesn't feel like she has. You kind of do have to have respect for yeah that yeah. person they lost, and, and it can't be a matter of like, well, I'm. You're I'm not in competition the, with them. Yeah, you're like, not. Like truly at all. Like, and it's that's I think. So you're happy. I think that's, that's a no. weird. Yeah. It was saying you're happy someone died in front of all that Brutal. person's loved ones. I mean, holy crap. I love that I can still see parts of her in all of you. Oh, what a There's beautiful There's so many thing things. You could also just not say anything. Yeah, just could. literally you saying quiet. You really could just not say anything. I, you could. If I, married, if I married a widower, I think any time I'm at a public, like with their families and they're talking about her, I would just be like. Or the maturity to love her, love her memory in yes, front of them and right. be like, tell me more story. Like I want to hear. Yeah, exactly. If you're all about, That's like, how we're all here right now. Because if you're all about like everything happened, so I'm where I am now, like that includes that. Yeah. And it's not, I'm happy. It's more like what a loving person yeah. who built this, this community, this community, this this pe these like people are now shaped because Created of who this children. person was. Yeah. And for me, I think, again, this is what I said with the signing of the licenses too. Like, I tend to remember the pain that I feel in those moments. And I think in that moment, I would be so devastated to something like that. 
And I don't think that I could have, I don't know if I could get over something like that. It's also the nature of how she died, like a tragic death. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, yeah. it's like, it's like, it's rough. Rough. That is real rough. Uh, and the um, kids, I, I, it just, I couldn't, I don't yeah, know if no. I could really look past that at all. Let's see some comments here. Updates? Some comments. I mean, she could have said something like, it was an unfortunate event for all of you, but I think she was the one who brought us together to be there nice. for each other. Great. Uh, she could have gone in any other way, but she decided to allow her insecurities be in the way because she knows if Kayla didn't pass, OP wouldn't have been with her. Oh. She has always been competing with a dead woman and will continue to do so. I, As always with the Reddit stories, we don't have, a, we're missing a lot of context. Yeah. That is the take that I'm feeling Agreed. based on the info. Agreed. Uh, it's like, well, am I better than that person you were with? It's like, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter. It truly doesn't matter. You're, it's And there's no competition. It's a brand new thing. Yeah. Right. It is a different thing. And I, I, well, I want to say that, like, I, I don't think that that insecurity is necessarily, like, stupid. Like, uh, I think it makes a lot of sense. Like, obviously, like, he lost someone, and I think... Again, I have empathy for her and that I feel like, sure, maybe you are like, again, wondering these questions, but to bring it out and make that insecurity somehow more powerful than being more thoughtful in a situation about your words, like it, it just doesn't seem like an even battle right there. This is exactly a predicament where I'm like, that is something you, you discuss with a therapist. Cause I don't think you should discuss that with him. Yeah. That's a tough, thing for him to untangle it's of like problem. of you going and be like I'm insecure about your dead wife it's like what's he going to say about it talk to a therapist and be like I'm dealing with insecurities I can't control my insecurities those happen yeah but how you go about it is your choice and she's going about it horribly and and on the contrary he is going about it really well I think I, like just I, even yeah. just the timeline at least before that he was talking about where right he had some space obviously he like mourned and then he said he was with her for about a year until yeah. he introduced mm -hmm. the kids. And then now three years later, they're getting engaged. Like, been... I feel like he's got a good head on his shoulders. Yeah. And he is really timing this out well. He is considering the kids. And, and he raised good kids, too, because his son was awesome. Yes. Uh, King. And I think I, I am the type to react like how he reacted. Whenever something, when someone says something crazy to me or uh, around me, like, uh, I, I, I process for a while. Like I, I think about it and then, um, so I don't, I don't think you should feel bad for not necessarily immediately mm -hmm. responding. Getting upset. Yeah. Um, someone all. else said, uh, I'm happy she died would be unforgivable for me, especially knowing my kids heard my fiance say that disgusting. I wouldn't be able to not think about that every time I looked at them. Yeah. yeah. Someone else said, yeah, she's never going to let this go. You can, your son just told you the deal. It's her or them Boom. choose wisely. I think that's where he's at. I, I think where I feel bad for the, the only thing that I'm feeling is, is, it does suck when you say something stupid and totally. you're like, it's all over because of that <laughs> one thing. Yeah. Not a pattern behavior, I said one thing and it's over. Yeah. But it's over, like and, and, it's, and it also, is over. And if that is the case and she didn't, again, if she was unconsciously just like saying things like that, she didn't mean to, she doesn't deserve to be in a situation where she's unconsciously hurting people. Like mm -hmm. she should just be placed in better circumstances. This doesn't seem like it, mm -hmm. it's something that can last. Uh, there's an edit here. Uh, Wow, I didn't expect this to get much. Uh, wow, I didn't expect to get this much advice so shortly after posting this. Nonetheless, thank you all for the advice and even the people calling me a bad father. I think your guys' words are what I needed to pull my head out of my ass. I will try to talk to my kids alone tonight before speaking with my fiance, and we'll see where it goes from here. I'm pretty sure my fiance and I are over though. I'll update late tonight or tomorrow on how the talks with everyone goes. Thank you all for, again for setting my head straight. Okay. Update. This is the next day. The honeymoon fix. <laughs> yeah, and they're like, Cabo's been amazing. <laughs> <laughs> the kids are in college. <laughs> yeah. I promised I would update everyone after I had talked to my kids, so here's the update. It's kind of long, so I hope that doesn't go against the rules of this community. I'm also gonna use this update as a way to clarify some of the questions people were asking in the comments. One, did my fiance apologize to anyone at the dinner party? No, she didn't. Ah! 
I honestly don't think she, it even registered or has registered to her that what she said was wrong. Okay, oh, yeah. that's nope. so pop. There you go. Nope. That is the cement. Nope. On that. nope, 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 nope. Uh, does Check fiance me. have social anxiety? <laughs> Not to my knowledge, no. In all the time I've known her, she's never shown any signs of social anxiety and doesn't have a history of it. If you have social anxiety, you'd apologize after. You'd, you'd be like, 100%. I said something stupid. That was my anxiety. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's been three days and I'm sorry. How old was my late wife? She was 37 when she passed and we were the same age. Amanda is 41. A lot of people were asking for clarification on the time frame of her passing and when my fiance and I met. At this point in time, Kayla has been gone for about six years and I met Amanda roughly three years after Kayla's passing. I didn't mention either of their ages as I didn't believe it was important because we're so close in age, but I understand why a lot of you guys would want to know. That's also a lot of time that's passed. Like... Yeah. Even if your ex is alive, it's like, yeah, but that was three years ago. Like, yeah. Why are you insecure about it? Yeah, yeah. Um, but in a way that's also not a lot of time, particularly for their children. No. Like, no. not okay to make No, it's that not a lot all. of time. It's not a lot of time as far as grieving goes. Right. But it is a lot of time as far as if you're dating someone and it's like they, they, they haven't been with someone for three years. You're not like, oh, well, how do you feel about this? It's like, right. it's been three years. It's, it's over. Years. Um, yeah. Um, well... Now we're even more clear that she's done for. Oh, no she's apologies. Done for. You have to. Now that I've clarified the things I was most asked about in the comments, we can go into the update. Ooh. While I'm writing this update, it's the day after I talk to my kids. So last night around 5:30, my fiance left for work. She works nights most days of the week, so I was able to call my son and ask if he could come over so I can talk to him and his sister. He goes to our local college and lives in an apartment near his school. When he started college, he wanted to move out, but also wanted to stay close to us, so he settled on an apartment a few blocks away from the college. He came over and I called him and his sister into the living room to talk about what, talk with both of them. When they were both seated, I told them point blank that I didn't think the wedding was happening anymore and that the comment she made was unacceptable. I then, by the advice of the comments, apologized to them. I told them I was sorry for not saying anything for so long and letting the tension thicken in our home. I told my daughter that I understood why she hasn't spoken to me and that I was sorry for allowing her to think what, that I was even remotely okay with what she said. I felt pretty spineless after we had gotten back from dinner that night, so I wanted to do everything in my power to make it right with my kids during the conversation. My daughter told me that she felt disgusted at the comment Amanda made, and even more so when I didn't defend her mother. She then told me that the past two years that she's known Amanda, she felt like she's been gradually trying to push her and Sam away from me. Mm. One of the examples Liz gave was when I, my son moved out. He moved out when, when he was about to start his sophomore year of college, and when he mentioned the idea of moving out, Amanda was the one who took that and ran with it. According to Liz, Amanda was the one encouraging Sam the most to move out. To be clear, I was never against Sam moving out, but I was clear to him that he was welcome to live at home for his college years and even after until he found where he wanted to be. I asked Sam if he felt pushed out by Amanda and if that's why he moved out. He said he hadn't felt pushed out before he told everyone he wanted to move, but after he put it out there, my fiance kept pushing for him to move out. Liz cut in and said that every time she brings up college, Amanda keeps encouraging her to go out of state. Liz doesn't plan on going out of state, and she's been open about wanting to go to college, uh, go to the college Sam is attending right now. Liz said she feels like Amanda is waiting till she graduates high school and goes to college so she can move out. A lot of the comments were right about the subtle comments eventually turning into Amanda wanting my kids pushed away from me. Liz said that she was scared that by the time I eventually noticed the way Amanda was acting, too big of a wedge would have already been driven between me and them. I told my kids that I'm sorry it's taken me so this long to notice and that I was also sorry they've been walking on eggshells for so long. I hugged my kids and told them that no matter what, they are my top priority, not Amanda or anybody else. A lot of comments pointed out that even though my son has grown, he still needs a father. And I made sure to let my son know that I will always be there for him and his sister, even when they are well grown. The entire conversation lasted about two hours. We covered a lot of the bases we wanted to, and it got emotional on all sides. In short, Amanda and I are done. I've made it a point to tell my kids that none of the situation is their fault, and that Amanda is the grown woman who said what she said. My kids and I are okay, are okay right now, but they aren't 100% with me and probably won't be for a while. I'm completely fine with that and just want my kids comfortable in their own home. Amanda has tomorrow off from work, so I plan on talking to her tomorrow. I also plan on calling my mother to ask her why she thought it was okay to even bring up Kayla at the dinner table. 
Uh, I don't want my daughter here when it's when it all goes down. So she's staying tonight and tomorrow night with Sam. So that's where I'm at right now. Not super happy about the outcome of me and Amanda, but would rather have my kids happy and healthy than have a wife. Again, thank you everyone for the advice and the harsh words. I'll update after I call off with Amanda. Thank you, everyone. Wow. I mean, I think this guy is really stepping up. I love this he's man. He's stepping up. Yeah, he's doing great. I, I would also say, like, I don't know. If I put myself in her shoes and I'm, I am dating someone whose yep. wife passed away yeah. and has kids, I'm like, it's, I am not even yeah. giving you advice. Like, I... You're not yeah. gonna that try. Is, like, You're not gonna try. I'm like, hey, it's oh, like, I'm, it's like, hey I'm, I'm wondering about college and stuff. But like, I don't, I don't know. Like, you know, I, yeah. I, I, I'm just, I'm not gonna be like, you should go out of college. You should go out of state. Yeah. You should, you should. Why yeah, not? I mean, if you did believe it, like, I don't know. I'm like, <sighs> yeah, go out of state. Go I don't fly somewhere. Go the, learn something new. Go live in a new on, place. Based on the kids' reactions, though. Yeah, that's not what it felt like to them. I, I, and that's but important. I'm guess, I'm getting the gauge, like, and the fact that their reaction was. Because I think if she was awesome, I yeah. think if they truly liked her and she said that, I think their reaction would have been like, hey, super out of pocket. You shouldn't yeah. have said that. They were done. It seems yeah. like they were maybe done before she said that. Yeah. And now they're unloading on like, hey, we we felt like she actually doesn't respect and us. That would, yeah. that, would ultimately and be, that would ultimately be my advice to this guy. Again, I, I think that he acted accordingly um and i i respect everything that he did i do i do think he should have maybe at the table it was also shocking for him and it was like well what and yeah. trying to deal with that but i feel like after a moment of shock like i feel like you, you do gotta, gotta go to the kids you gotta get your shit together you no do no no to go I, and talk to the kids I, three days is a long time to not check in yes with them. three days is way too long way I, too long i understand at the dinner table of being in shock and being like uh but yeah we, and, and, and even if just it's like an hour passes and you're suddenly like okay i need to yeah but we're not like, leaving this place we're not leaving this place without talking about it absolutely yeah. and i'm not letting you ruminate I and marinate in that sauce like i said no. i'm the type that'll be i i think a lot but it doesn't a, a day is not going to pass. Right. No. And and also, though, too, like, it's also something to be said that all of this was happening with his kids and he didn't know, you know? Like, uh, I think... He's not a, checking in with his kids. I think a check-in would have been great, like, because he, to his knowledge, he was like, oh, like, yep. like Amanda, she's always been friendly, whatever. Like, yep. he should have checked in. Yeah. However, I... It is, I feel confident in saying lesson learned for him. It I seems like I, he really knows and lines up his priorities. He's got his values in check now, so I'm good with it. Yeah. Update number two. Because <gasps> he talked, he, now after he talked with the, uh, with Amanda. I keep getting scared that we're like, yes, this man, yes, this man. And <laughs> yeah, gonna there's like, going to be a no. shoe, the shoe drop. Uh, yeah, so this is the ball drop. Wait, the other shoe drops. The other shoe drops. But the ball drops too, right? The ball drops, the shoe no, drops. No, you drop the ball, the shoe drops. Continue, Shane. <laughs> Two days from the original post. Okay, everyone, here's the update you guys were waiting for. So where we last left off is my kids and I talked, made up, and my daughter is staying with her brother so she doesn't get caught up in what is about to happen with my now ex-fiance. Mm. Before the hard part of the day, breaking it off with Amanda, I made a call to my mom to let her know of the situation. A lot of the comments told me not to bash my mom for the comment she made. Now thinking back on the situation with a clear mind, the comment my mother made towards Amanda was most definitely a compliment towards her. And that was confirmed. What was the, the comment? Sorry. Yeah, I forget. It, the mom had said like, I'm so glad you found a spark. Oh yeah. I'm so glad you found that spark that you had with with uh Kayla oh, in someone fine. else. Oh, that's yeah. fine. Like like oh you found you found love again. Okay. Like I'm so yeah, yeah, glad yeah. you found something like Agreed. that. And that's it's... what spurred I'm happy she's dead. I'm happy she's dead. <laughs> I know. It's like dude, Girl. you you Girl. don't that yeah. is a comment you don't need to respond to. That's a comment you can no, just like that is a just, thing. That's one of those where you just like grab their hand and you just go like that's a super that's warm do. comment. <laughs> it's yeah. a very heartwarming thing to so hear. Sweet. Yeah. Or you, yeah. Look, or you compliment what you see in the dead wife. That you were still here you were existing. In. That's what I'm saying. You were in. Or just thank them for the turkey. Yes, was it Thanksgiving? Thank you. Or was it just for dinner? me to be here in this place with you all. Yeah. yeah. Not I'm happy she's dead. No, 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 not that. I also love the idea. There's a crazy scheme in my head where like the mom is like, I'm gonna get her now. Like she sets it up. <laughs> the kids are like, now. Now, yeah, get her. <laughs> She's like, now, Liz, you go run to the room. She's yeah. like, no. They're like, three days. He hasn't budged. Three days. We did it. We did it. Amanda's gone. <laughs> this is Liz and this is Sam. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> um, so, and that was confirmed in the call I had with her. My mother, bless her heart, 
felt extremely guilty for the entire situation. She fully believed the situation all stemmed from her one comment. I assured her that none of the situation was her fault and that I've never blamed her one bit for any of this. We talked a bit before, before I let her go. The call ended at about 9.15 a.m. and I was left waiting for Amanda to wake up. She woke up at around 10.30 a.m. and I didn't want to ambush her straight after she woke up, so I waited until about 11.10 a.m. to sit her down and talk. Fuck. A lot of people in the comments suggested to secretly video the whole thing. I thought that was extremely smart, so I had my phone set to what? record in my back pocket Wait, the entire what? time. I don't know. Uh, oh, no. Shoe. Drop. The ball, ball. The ball. The shoe. So I had my phone set to record in my back pocket the entire time. I didn't think she'd try to do anything drastic, but I would rather be safe than sorry. The talk with her went about as well as anyone could imagine, so not great. I told her I needed to talk with her, that it was serious, and we sat in the living room. When we were seated, I began unloading at her about the comment she made about Kayla at my parents' house, how it made my kids feel, how it made me feel, her lack of an apology of any sort of, or, or any sort of acknowledgement to what she said, and so on. I told her I expect her to give an apology to my parents, my in-laws, and most importantly, my kids. During the entire time of me unloading on her, she didn't seem to show any bit of emotion other than her eyes, which were slightly wider than normal. After I spoke my truth, she straight up asked, so if I apologize to everyone, we'll go back to normal? I told her point blank, no. I told her that the comment she made at dinner was not the extent, was not the extent of my problems with her. I then told her that I know she heavily pressured Sam to move out when he wasn't even sure if he wanted to at that point in time, and that I also know she is now trying to do the same with Liz. I did my absolute best to leave my kids out of the situation, but told Amanda that the way my kids described her treatment towards them was the main reason I don't see a future with her anymore. Amanda was stone-faced up until I told her we were done. I think that's when the panic set in for her. She kept saying that she'll apologize to everyone, that she'll make it right with my kids, etc., etc. I told her that if she apologizes, I will certainly appreciate it, but we were still done either way. She was full on crying at this point and asked me, why wasn't I willing to try and fix our relationship? And I told her that even though I loved her, and I'll be honest, I still love her very much, I was not willing to take another chance of my kids being hurt against the way they were. I was frustrated and shot back at her asking why she was trying to push my kids out of their own home. And I got, a, and I got back an answer I was not at all expecting. I was completely shocked at her response. A lot of commenters actually hit the nail right on the head with what Amanda was truly like. Amanda responded with, well, I didn't know you expected me to house somebody else's kids for the rest of my life. <laughs> I immediately saw red and after about a minute, I told her to get out. I told her that my kids can go wherever they damn please, especially in the house that I own and pay for. Hell yeah. She tried to retaliate, but in the end ended up packing a few bags and went to stay with one of her friends. Good. I, I emailed a copy of the phone recording to myself. The talk only lasted about 25 minutes, not nearly as long as, as the talk I had with my kids. So if anything ends up coming out of the conversation, I have all I need to keep my name clear. I've texted my kids that Amanda is out of the house for good, that they are welcome to come home anytime, and let my son know that if he wants to, he is more than welcome to move back in completely. Aww. My daughter is coming back from her brother's place in the afternoon, and I still have phone calls to make to my parents and in-laws to apologize for the, this mess of a situation. Amanda is out of my house, but keeps blowing up my phone for us trying to work things out. I'll let her come by in the next few days so she can collect the rest of her stuff out of my house, but she is not welcome to live here again. I'll be honest and say that I am a bit devastated. Despite everything Amanda did, I still love her, and I probably won't stop loving her for a minute, but I'll be okay. Right now, I just want to focus on the family that needs me, and I will use this situation as an excuse to bond more with my kids. Another big thank you to everyone who helped me in the comments. A lot of the advice you guys have, uh, guy gave played a part in making things right with my family. I will update if anything else big or important happens, but as of now, I'm taking it one step at a time and making it right with my family. What a, wow. that guy, pretty great. I love that. Yeah. It's a pretty great My blood dude. is boiling yeah. that she did not apologize. And, and, then, and then she's like, well, if I apologize, will it be okay? Like, that's not the problem, Amanda. You clearly don't care about literally anybody. It sounds anybody. like she was unaware. Like, she yeah. just did not have any He, he dodged a bullet, like, yeah. hardcore. Yeah. Um, I, I love, though, that he still found a way to just spin it around and just be like, at least, like, now, like, through this whole situation, what I might have just gotten out of it, though, is a chance to be closer to my kids. Yeah. Which I think is maybe, That's, again, just what that family needed. Like in a yeah. really weird, like 
in a in a kind of twisted way, it's like, again, everything that happens brings you to the place that you are now. And so maybe all of that needed to happen so that the three of them could come together and be stronger. Right, right. No, I mean, he, he, uh, most people I don't think would handle this situation as well as he did. Oh my gosh. I mean, he really, most people marry that person. Right. I would say most yeah. do. Um, so really good on him yeah. for listening to the right people and making the right choice. And she confirmed it for him. Yeah. Like by saying that shit about his kids, it was yeah. like, oh, yeah. no more doubts. Definitely. Um, holy crap. Wow. Well, next story. So this is a 25 year old woman writing this. Uh, my boyfriend who's 33 suddenly told me he wants to establish traditional gender roles once we get married. Oh, okay. That's it, we don't need to hear anything. <laughs> 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 Moving on to That's our next okay. story. Yeah, the last one. I have been with my boyfriend for three years now and it has been wonderful. We have been talking about marriage lately and as it felt right for the both of us. Over the course of our relationship, we often talked about what our goals are and what we wanted our future together to look like. I was always vocal about how I wanted a more equal non-traditional relationship. We both work, we both don't want children. I expect to have a joint account with him and pay our expenses proportionally based on our income. I do make more than him, but I don't mind since I believe us to be a team. And for the last three years, he's agreed with me, or so I thought. These past two to three weeks, we have been setting a timeline on our wedding plans and all, basically talking about all the concrete steps and little details. And so I asked him again how he wanted our marriage to be like, but in more detail. He suddenly told me that he wants us to have traditional gender roles. And I was so confused. These past three years have not been that way. I am so confused how he just expects us to change after marriage. I have been dating him and wanting to pr pursue something serious with him because I love our current dynamic and he seemed happy too. I have made it clear since day one that I want to maintain what we have now until forever. He has never told me that that was not the case for him. Now I feel tricked slash lied to. He told me that although I make more of the income, he wants to be the man of the house, the leader and so what he says goes. He has the final say in the decisions and I cannot be questioned. What the hell? <laughs> I told him this will lead me to not being heard and miserable. It will make me feel less valued. He says it's the best way to avoid arguments. Sure, less arguments because what I think wouldn't matter, but I will build resentment and then it's no longer a happy marriage. Uh-uh. -oh. There's less arguments. I'm sorry. There's less arguments if There's I make all arguments. decisions. There, we won't argue if I'm the only one who can speak. <laughs> right. <laughs> If I sew your mouth shut, there's gonna be less arguments. He's got a point. He's got a, He's point. Got a point. Technically the truth. In my previous post, I mentioned that I have seen him binge watching alpha male podcast recently. I was about to say, yeah. I think this dude was red pilled. There's no way. And I don't know if he has always thought this way or if it's recent. All I know is that my whole body is telling me this is not it. Right, listen. I cannot marry him. It sounds like trouble, but I, am I correct for thinking this way? I don't know why, but the last three years have been so wonderful that it's so hard for me to wrap my head around this. This sudden switch. Please give me some advice and courage. Ah, oh, that sucks. I wonder how often that's happening to women nowadays with all that shit. With all the, the podcasts. Oh. Yeah, just just men getting convinced of this stuff. Like, it's it's just sucks. It's so detrimental. Dude. It's such a bummer. It, it goes back to, to the point that we were saying earlier as well, where again, you hear something like this, and at first glance, it's like, oh my God, that's ridiculous. Like, she needs to leave him again. But it's still like, no, that's not always who this person was. Right. And it's really hard to shake off all of the hurt that's happening right now because of mm. all the memories you had before that. Right. Like, it's a it's a very drastic change, and, and I, I feel so bad for her because she's definitely navigating a lot of like, is this a change that I need to just walk away from? Or is this right. like... Right. Just a phase? Like, what's going on? This isn't the first story we've had like this on Reddit stories. That's sad. Um, there's been other ones. Uh, there was an insane, I think you were, Chance, were you there? For the one where they were they were friends and suddenly he was just like, yeah, you're my girlfriend. Oh, yeah. Uh -uh. And it was like a whole yeah. similar type of ideology of just like, yeah, you're, you're I, here. You're the, I get to decide that. Like, just, just fully brainwashed into thinking like, <sighs> women are lesser and I can make decisions for them. It's, Unfortunately, happening, and it's so awful. Crazy. Um, some comments here. 
I would have laughed the entire time I packed. <laughs> uh, someone said, seriously, a 33-year-old man-child, so gullible and naive, thinking he's an alpha bro, lol, to the fall for the red pill, uh, took, br- took to fall for the red pill, expect tox- toxicity and childish tantrums from now on, just end it and watch him melt down. Another comment, it sounds like you never really knew him. He sounds like he's always been a misogynist. You just never got a clear and direct answer from him. You say you were always vocal about what you wanted, but was he? You never mentioned if he agreed with you. You said you asked him again, which shows you never had a solid answer yet. You both still talked about marriage. Did you both agree on things or was he passively acknowledging? This doesn't sound like a sudden switch. This sounds like he was passive and now he's actively acting in his own best interests. It's just that it's come down to crunch time. Maybe when you look back at your first interactions with him, you'll notice the pattern of passivity on his part. Not saying that this is the case or it's on you, but it's that the signs were always there. It's just not easy to recognize them. Women especially are conditioned to tolerate a lot of things because being single as a woman is the worst thing ever to alpha males as it happens. Be wary of what you think is right for you and what's expected of you to tolerate. OP responded, I think you are right, actually. There were many times where he would just nod, and if I directed a question at him, he'd answer vaguely to kind of match mine and deflect. I think that made me think he agreed, especially since he never said anything opposing it, Mm. and he clearly knew my position. I think I just expected people to be honest and gave him the benefit of the doubt. I'm naive, I guess. Thanks for your response. Mm. Um, Yeah. I think that's that's definitely an important uh, note that the person who made that comment made as well, like, it is 1000% not her fault. Um, nor is it like, you know, any woman who finds herself in that situation because yeah, like it, it, these ideas aren't just like crazy and out of nowhere. Like they clearly were We're something that were, it it was something that was in place once. Yeah. So it's like, in a way it was like not crazy at some point. Like that was something that actually was out there. So it's you're right it's like in a way women are just kind of conditioned where it's just like well as long as we're not actually going back to that like this is something that's okay and then you have something straight up in your face and she's still kind of like what do i do yeah instead of being like i gotta get a playbook yeah yeah Yeah. and also it's like that i don't know it it doesn't seem like she was uh yeah she was letting a lot of things slide she, he's clearly watching a bunch of podcasts and stuff that she wasn't aware <laughs> yeah. of. Like, yeah. I mean, if she knows that he's doing any of that or watching any of that and consuming that stuff, it's like, okay, that's not lining up with yeah. what you agree with me on. And I, I don't know. I think if these things are this important to you, as I'm sure they are for everyone, it's like, it's not a matter of just saying it and getting a nod. It's like, you kind of should talk it out totally. and really like hear it from him. Uh, cause yeah, this is not the first time we've also had ones where, uh, a guy will just be like, yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. And then suddenly it gets down to it. And then that just happened in the other story today. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's people who clearly are, you know, thinking, oh, well, okay. You have your fun little ideas. Right. Yeah. Right. We'll change once we and get And then married. when they have a point to make, they have it all outlined and they have yeah. plenty of words to right. share. Yeah. No, he's, yeah. he's a piece I feel of like shit. I overcompensate like in uh in like the relationships and friendships that i have i feel like whenever i have a point to make i feel like i'm like oh no let me be clear about this and i also want to receive from other people yeah. like oh yeah no definitely right. otherwise i'm like wait how do you feel about it though exactly you know yeah you could say th- these guys are afraid of the response that they're going to get but i also think it's that they're thinking oh I know she won't like what I th- what I believe, so we need to get married first so that she can't has and a choice. That's, you Which can't is also do stupid it because once way. you're married, someone still has a choice. But they're <laughs> he's thinking in old school. Once I lock like, it in, yep. yeah, and she wants it sealed to choice. in totally. um, your blood and ink. <laughs> but that's a that's a dangerous person. I mean, really, like anyone who thinks any form of that way, I think is dangerous. Completely. Um, because then what else are you going to condone? That is absolutely right. ridiculous. All right, update. And trigger warning, uh, there is uh, like pressuring sex in, in, in this. So if you want to skip ahead, our last story is going to be of a lighter tone than this. But let's get into this. Thank you all for your responses. I wanted to update you guys on what happened and hopefully answer some of your questions along the way. 
I luckily don't live with him or have any shared assets. He also did explicitly say that he expects me to continue working, so I guess he wanted the best of both worlds. And before we started dating, I was hesitant due to our age gap. I have heard of horror stories, so I've been very careful about power dynamics. But he was amazing for the last three years, so I did put my, put my defenses down eventually. My friends and family also liked him. They always said we genuinely seemed happy together and complimented each other well. On to what happened. He came over to my house the night I posted on Reddit, which isn't unusual. We spend most nights together after work. I knew I had to break up, but didn't know how to yet. I was still debating if I should ask him more questions or just end it. And if I end it, do I tell him everything or keep it concise? Luckily, he did not suspect anything so far. So it bought me some time to figure out my next step. I thought. As soon as he came in, though, he tried to initiate intimacy, and I said no since I was not in the mood. Understandably so. He got angry. He has never done this before. We have always had a very healthy, fulfilling sexual relationship. But now he kept trying to convince me to have sex with him and asked me why I was putting my needs over his. That I just that I can just force myself to do it for the sake of our relationship. Oh. I said that I wasn't feeling well. I know I shouldn't even have to justify though. No. He said that even if I'm not feeling well, it's not an excuse. I was disgusted. I fell out of love that instant. I mean, I was already in the process of it, but this really did it. Good. I also felt very unsafe. I stood my ground, told him that this is not consensual and that someone's health is more important than his need for sex. I kept repeating it until he eventually stopped pushing, but he didn't leave my place until an hour later. I was afraid to get I was afraid to anger him again by telling him to leave, so I just stayed quiet doing stuff around the apartment until he decided to leave. Luckily, nothing happened to me, but wow. I told my friends and family everything. They support me in my decision to break up and help me prepare my speech. I asked him to meet me in a public space the next day as one of the comments suggested. My friends were nearby keeping an eye. He was still angry at me because I haven't been talking to him and I refused sex. He asked me why I expect him to take care of me when I'm unwell, but I didn't give him sex yesterday. Uh, I decided to not waste my breath in explaining something so basic. I went on with my breakup speech as prepared where I told him everything, how disrespectful he's been, all the podcast stuff, etc. He suddenly looked so scared and begged me to take him back. He said he understands what I'm saying and that I'm right about the podcast and that he will work on it. He was trying to convince me not to break up, but I did not believe anything he said. I held my ground and told him there is no room for discussion. It's over and I left. Now I feel a weight lifted, but I am also heartbroken. I know this was the right thing to do. I just feel defeated. I wake up so anxious and feel like crying constantly. I am barely eating. I am seeing a therapist next week to help cope. If you guys have words of encouragement and maybe success stories of meeting your person, I'd love to hear. Thank you all sincerely. You all helped me in finding courage and strength in my time of need. Wow. Thank God she got out. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God she got out. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, scary town. Scary again. town, yeah. USA. <laughs> I, I would say for anyone that is, that is an, unbelievably instant like Boom, get out gone get, Fell, get out, out get out get out go just fly go, just go. Yeah, absolutely any form of that um is an immediate leave uh oh my god what a terrible person yeah i like should just say it over and over again i'm like you're not listening clearly you're not listening and then and then he just tries to like flip it and then just no. tries to, like, wait, wait wait i'm so sorry i know mm -hmm. too how late. delusional this guy was even right. to himself yeah, because yeah. he clearly wasn't thinking it was ever a possibility. He does not know who he is at all. And no. this man is 33. Like, mm -hmm. he needs to get a grip. He needs to get some help. And he needs to be mm -hmm. completely just change himself around. I, I feel so bad for her, too, because she's like talking about she's like, if you guys have words, words of encouragement, maybe success stories of meeting your person. It's like you're 25. You're mm -hmm. fine. Like you have so much time. You have the rest of your life, truly. But but you're very young. And very but I young. know I remember how I felt at 25. And you think you think it's over. It feels um, like, bre breakups feel like death when you're like in your early 20s because you're like, oh my god. And again, truly. like there's still that like even if it's not like your specific timeline of getting married, like you're still like in your in your head. I guess I'll say like personally for me, like. I don't want to get married like anytime soon, but I've always grown up with like these numbers in my head of sure. like, right? Like before mm -hmm. 30 or like your biological clock or like maybe right. in your mid twenties or like my parents got married when they were like younger than I right. am right now. Like there's all of these ideas in your head that are floating around. So 
I mean, breakups in general suck, but a, a one that lasted like three years, you can't help but write the fallacy. You can't help but it's think tough. like right. all this time was wasted. And it's like, but no, it wasn't. You learned. Don't cry because it's, it's never over. Wasted. Smile because we're happy. <laughs> what it, it's never wasted. <laughs> what the hell? Even even most bad relationships, you you learn so much. so much. Well, the reality is, and I think this is my take on. It's not necessarily an age gap. It's that someone in their early 20s, I I worry that a lot of guys, especially dudes in their 30s, if they're dating someone who's in their early 20s, it's like, are they into you because of your insecurities? Are yeah. they into you because they think they can pull one over on you? Yeah. Because once people are in there, once people have gone through what she, now that she's gone through this, yeah. you can't pull that on her anymore. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of predatory men out there who probably immediately recognize that. That's so that true. And go, oh shit, I can't, I can't fool her. I can't trick her. Oh, like, and I, you know, what is all these trickery? It but it's, I mean, it's, it's full on just predatory. It's not the way, it's not behavior. the way. Yeah. True. The last thing that I'll say too, with the age gap, it's also not my, I, I don't think there's a magic number or anything. It's it's definitely just individual personalities and maturity levels. True. What For do sure. you know and what does this person know? And are you How able to compliment? be young together? It, yeah. Are you able to be older together? Right. Like are, are you able to just fit into these different timelines? Right. No, I mean there's there's that guy could find a woman in her thirties that he could find the same way to pull it on her. Completely. But I think that's what he was looking for. Yeah. yeah. I get that sense. And he was like, I can't, I have this power. I have this ability. <laughs> yeah. And he's a coward and he's an asshole. I, like um, <laughs> I liked it. Some yeah. comments here. It's funny how the minute it sunk in that his behavior has alienated you, he began the frantic begging and bargaining. Well done on, on remembering you have innate worth and self-determination. You're strong and brave. Someone else said, yeah, OP. I remember your post and was one of the one of many that encouraged you to get out. I am so damn proud of you. Aww. Someone said, "I decided to not waste my breath in explaining something so basic." Champion. Nice. Someone said, "Hey, it's not easy to end a serious relationship. Your investment of time and shared experiences and love was not wasted. It brought you to this place. You know exactly who you are and what you deserve. You did good. Proud of you." Aww. I think this is I I'm not happy she went through any of this but yeah. like she is she is double the person she's literally. got some tools in the tool oh belt. my god yeah, yeah no yeah. do yeah. not fuck with her lesson now. learned experiences like that's all just gonna come in handy for her life it's like bella once she becomes a vampire <laughs> now we have to move on <laughs> <laughs> all right here's our last story and it is a palate cleanser for us all so this is a this is a bit of a plot twist uh a couple does get married here just not in the way they expected. Ooh, what do okay. you mean? This comes from today I f***ed up. Today I f***ed up by accidentally getting married at the UPS store. <gasps> awesome. Uh, I like it. So romantic. Okay, so this is 2021, uh, spring of 2021. Mm. This happened a couple hours ago. I recently proposed to my long-term girlfriend a couple weeks ago. Unfortunately, due to the nature of my work, we have to move soon and have a real wedding before then during COVID would be impossible. I got off work early today and after getting home, my fiance asked if we could go get some paperwork notarized for our courthouse wedding we planned to have in a month or two. We hopped in the car with a form we printed off the county website and drove to the closest UPS. The notary checked our IDs and had us sign and then she signed, notarized the form and said, congratulations. <gasps> Cool, now all we have to do is go to the courthouse on a day of our choosing to be wed. My fiance called the courthouse afterwards, double checking to see if we needed to bring anything else. And after calling me, her boyfriend, the lady on the phone corrected her by saying, husband. She then told my fiance our state no longer requires a ceremony with the judge at the courthouse. That form is literally the marriage certificate and she is now married. Whoops. We had a honeymoon picnic at a park near a lake. Oh. I love how the UPS guy was like, Congratulations. Done. Yeah. Get out. <laughs> Not like, oh, are you guys are you guys sure? Are you doing anything? No, he's just there to right. stamp that paper. UPS was like, congrats. All right, kiss. You want some stamps? Uh, <laughs> stamps. He, like, gets out some confetti too. <laughs> like he could be cute about it. Oh, that he gets out one of those he gets out one of those poppers, he's just like <laughs> <laughs> Next. And they're like, oh no, not yet. It's another not couple. Yet. They're like fully in. Stop. Uh, some comments. Uh, as a former notary slash UPS store employee, this would have made my week. Assuming yeah. you guys are nice, that is. OP responded, haha, I, I like to think we are. 
We're now wondering how many other couples have been married in that store. Mm. Someone said, congrats. Ask UPS for the surveillance footage so you can share your big oh, day with your family. Oh, that's good. That's cute. And the man, he needs to come back for the real wedding and be the officiant. Yeah. Oh, uh, thank you. UPS lady, I ship it. Stop. My wife and I also got married at the UPS store on purpose. Congratulations. Oh, <laughs> Someone said, just wait until Amazon delivers the kids. Uh, uh, lastly, someone said, hi, friend. Congratulations on your wedding. May you have many wonderful years together. I'd like to make a suggestion. Today, while your feelings are fresh, write each other a lovely note to give to the other at some point in the future when things are hard. Aww. It'll remind you both why you love each other so much. Take care, and again, congratulations. OP responded, excellent suggestion. We'll definitely do that. Thank you. It's Aww. a good thing it was UPS and not Fed X. Uh... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Well, that's it. But now it. we have literally nothing else to say. Now we got, now we're done. Now we're, uh, uh, how do we feel? That was, that, that, that was, was a, a great journey. It was a yeah. journey. This episode, some episodes I end them and I'm like. Whew. Yeah, that was yeah. heavy. Um, a lot of people not communicating everything they needed. It's always That's always that. It's always communication. Well, not always. Cause man number two communicated. He just communicated all the wrong things. That's true. I. Yeah, Which well, and they communicated too late. The one who was like, he agreed, and then he like oh, faked yeah. the document. So no, there sometimes you're just a bad No, you person. can't communicate three years down the line. Yeah. No, yeah. You need to communicate immediately. In the moment. Yeah. That's not communication. Right. Well, thank you both for being here. Thank, thank you for good. having Your wise yeah. words and your great jokes. Let us know uh, suggestions for themes and subreddits, and go and buy tickets for the live show this Friday. It's going to be insane. It's truly it's truly like probably the coolest thing we've ever done. We have we have never put so much effort into something like this. Yeah. Uh, That's so exciting. I yeah. know, man. Yeah. It, it's like our first it's our first big thing since Anthony came back. Yeah. Like, this is our yeah. first this is our first event. It's yeah. bigger than Anthony coming back. I know. Frankly, that's old news. Yeah. Because yeah. now we're going to kill him. Yeah. <laughs> With <laughs> jokes. <laughs> um, so we'll see you there. And uh, we'll also see you next Saturday back here. Oh. Bye. Bye.